Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about how to create a DHCP scope in Windows 2022 DHCP server. So here is the agenda. Before we create a DHCP scope, we can understand what is DHCP scope, and then we can create a DHCP scope in Windows 2022 DHCP server. And finally, we can validate the DHCP client IP address. So whatever the scope we create, whether this IP is received from within the scope or not. Okay, so these three points we can discuss. So first point, what is DHCP scope? DHCP scope is a range of IP addresses. Range of IP address means, let's say in our lab, we are using 192.168.10 series. The range of IP address means you can reserve some range of IP, 192.168.10.120.130. Let's say 10 IP address are range of IP address that are available to leased to the client or workstation. So client or workstation means either it is a desktop, laptop or thin clients. OK, now another point. How to create DHCP scope in Windows 2022 DHCP server? So if you want to create this, let's log into our lab system. So when we log into the lab system, as we know, within our DHCP server, if you open a server manager to verify the DHCP install or not, within the server manager, we can see our roles are installed on this server. ADDS installed, DHCP installed, DNS also installed. So to open the console, you can open from here DHCP or you can run the command DHCP MGMT.msh. See, this DHCP name is our Active Directory server only. It is configured. So the name is ad01.gcglab.com. So when you expand IP version 4 and select the IP version 4, the initial step, it clearly says add a scope. So that means a scope, just now we discussed scope is a range of IP address assigned to computers requesting a dynamic IP address. Dynamic means automatic IP address. So you must create and configure the scope before dynamic IP address can be assigned. To add a new scope on the action menu, click new scope. So that means they are saying action menu, new scope. Okay, they clearly given the instruction. So as per the instruction only, right click here, go to the action. When you select the action, we can see the scope or else another way is right click the IPv4, you can see the new scope. So select the new scope option and see welcome to new scope wizard so click on next we have to enter the scope name see that the scope name can be any scope name we can mention let's say a scope hyphen zero one we are creating a first scope suppose in future if you add another scope we can mention scope two scope three and so on or else some organization they may have some standard naming convention based on your organization naming convention also you can enter the scope name OK, like uh, suppose you are assigning the scope of IP range of IP address to Hyderabad location. You can mention HYD scope. Suppose if you are assigning for Singapore location, Singapore SG scope. Suppose you are assigning for US, US scope, Australia, AUS scope like that. Even though you can differentiate based on the locations also just for our understanding, I mentioned scope one. OK, so whenever we assign the scope one description, you can write anything based on be, just for our convenience. Click on next and IP range here only we can provide the IP range. See the IP range 192.168.10. Let's say within our lab, if you want to reserve some range, for example, 140, 142, 192.168.10. Let's say we plan to reserve the 10 IP addresses. That means we are giving the scope range is 140 to 150. Even if you client, if you any client automatically get the IP address, that automatic IP will comes within this range, within this 10 IPs only. OK, so and the length is 24 and subnet mass default for this network is class C IP address. So 3 8s, 24 length and 255.255.255.0. OK, so now click on next and add exclusion and delay. Suppose within this 10 IPs, if you want to add any exclusion IP, you can add the exclusion IP range here. OK, 
but currently we just given only 10 IPs only. So we no need to add exclusion here. Click on next and the lease duration. As I mentioned earlier, lease duration means eight days default. That means whatever the client automatically receive the IP address, this IP address is stable for eight days. After eight days, it will automatically renewed with your new IP address. Okay, so that is called lease duration. Default lease duration is eight days. Now click on next and the configure DHCP option. Yes, I want to configure these options now. So click on next and router. Router is nothing but a default gateway. So in our lab network, default router IP, default gateway is 192.168.10.1. So just click on add. So our gateway is added. Click on next. And the DNS domain name and DNS server is it's a gcglab.com and our DNS IP address is 192.168.10.53. Okay, let's leave it the default options. Click on next and win server. Currently, we do not using a win servers. So just leave it blank. Click on next and activate the scope. If you want to activate the scope now, you can activate. And then no, I will not. I will activate the scope later. Suppose if you have started a new branch in Singapore, but the new branch network is going to up by next month. So that means when you are creating a scope today, we no need to activate. We can leave it as a no, I will activate later option during that scenario. Suppose your site going should be up to up to uh, should be up by today means you can choose yes. But in our lab system, just for our testing, we can activate now itself. But real time scenario, there is a chances of few sub few scopes we need to activate based on the schedule time. OK, so now click on next. Now completing the new scope wizard, click on finish. See when you click on finish, you can see the scope 192.168.10.0 scope one is created. And if you see the address pool, currently address pool range is 140 to 150 range. That is the address range for distribution. And address leases, leases means any clients received the IP or not. Present, there is no IPs received. And reservation, if you want to reserve any IP, we can reserve also. And the scope options, default, it will show the default uh, gateway, that means router, DNS server, and our domain name. That is only that it shows in under the scope options. Okay, so now let back to the slide. We already created a DHCP scope in Windows 2022 DHCP server. This point we are clear. Now, another point is how to validate the DHCP client IP address. That means whatever the scope we created, just now 140 to 150 range, whether this scope automatically assigning the IP address to any client or not. OK, so in our lab system for testing purpose, I created a one more Windows system, Windows 2022. I just mentioned the name as just for testing purpose, DHCP client 01. OK, but this DHCP client 01 host name, it's not a join to the domain and it's automatically pick the IP address is 100 IP address. But when we join to the domain, it's supposed to get the IP address of DHCP range IP address. So to test that one, just log into the server DHCP client system. This is also running on a Windows 2022. Either you can test the DHCP client on client OS or server OS, doesn't matter. But remember that most of the real time scenario dynamic IP assigned only for the client operating system and most of the servers using a static IP. Static IP means manually assigned IP address and dynamic IP means automatically assigned IP address from DHCP server. OK, so let's log into DHCP client system and once we log in. See, currently this system is not a join to the domain. We'll plan to join to the domain. So if you want to join to the domain, open the server manager. Select the local server. See, currently it is in the work group. So just click on work group and we can plan to join to the domain. If you want to join to the domain, select the domain and enter our domain name. Let's say our domain name gcglab.com. While you are adding the system to domain, it requires a domain admin password. So it says gcglab.com could not be contacted. OK, that means the network is requiring a network. OK, that's fine. name is typed correctly. OK, gcglab.com, it's typed correctly only. 
let me cancel and verify the IP address. It is in the 192.168.10.100 range. OK, and let me try to ping to our DNS server. 192.168.10.53. It is showing DNS is not our AD server is not reachable. That means right click here and check the connectivity status. See it's connected to the VM network only. If you see the VM network. I'm just checking the virtual machine network range AD01 connected to VM network and even DHCP client also connected to same network. OK, but still it is unable to communicate. Let's try to. NCPA.CPL. We can try. Another method is. Drivers. I'm just updating the local host DNS entry. AD01 dot GCG lab dot com. OK, let's save this one. And double check our AD system IP address. It is 192.168.10.53. OK, so here also it is showing the same IP range. 10.100 range, OK. So once we join to the system to domain, it's supposed to get within the DHCP scope range IP address. OK, so in order to get that one, let me try to ping the IP address first. OK, it detect the IP is 192.168.0.100. OK, for the time being, let's change the IP address to 10. Ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot hundred. I'm just giving testing purpose ten series hundred and later we'll change it to automatic once it is joined to domain ten dot one and one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot fifty three until we establish the communication to AD. I change the IP to hundred. OK, see so now sta status it is able to ping. Now we'll check the ping status to DNS server. See it's able to ping. Now we can add the system to domain. Click on change domain and our domain name is gcglab.com. And it require a domain admin password. Let me assign the password here. So click on OK. See that it's already joined to welcome to gcglab.com domain. Click on OK. Click on OK. It requires a restart now. So let's restart. Once the client system is back to online, we'll change the IP address from static to dynamic and we'll observe that whether this, this client system able to detect the IP address within our DHCP scope or not. OK, that is only the validation part. So now the client system is up. Let's send control all delete. We'll try to log in with the domain. See domain account is administrator.
administrator or else gcg lab slash administrator and password i am trying to log in with domain administrator account okay once we log into with the domain administrator account i am going to change the ip address if you see if you type the ip address in the command prompt ip config i can i am seeing the ip 10.100 let me increase the font here see it is showing as 10.100 but this is not in our DHCP scope range. So to modify that one, go to the network connection properties, ncpa.cpl. When we look, go to the ncpa.cpl, go to the properties. Currently, this IP address is assigned as a static IP. When you change IP address to automatic, then only it will get the IP address from DHCP scope. Okay, so now click on close. Refresh. It will detect the IP shortly. See if you see the IP address 10.140. Earlier, if you see this command prompt, it is showing 100 IP. Now, if I type the IP config now, see the IP address is 10.140. That means this 140 is automatically assigned from DHCP server. To verify from DHCP server side, go to the A, again DHCP server. See here, just right click here, refresh. Once you refresh, we have a address pool range 140 to 150 and address leases. Leases means already releases. See, 140 is released. Which server it is released? It releases to the DHCP client 01 gcglab.com. So this is how for testing purpose, I added only one DHCP client. Even if you add a client wise Windows 10, Windows 11, any of the other clients, and once you join to the domain, it will automatically get the IP address from DHCP server, whatever the range you assigned. Okay. For our lab testing purpose, I assigned only 10 IP ranges. Okay. Hope you clear about the DHCP scope, how we can get. Just in case, if you want to renew this IP to another new IP, generally the command is IP config space slash renew. If you type renew, it will try to renew the new IP address also within this range it may try to get new ip also maybe we can try ip config still it is 140 generally it will automatically update this 142 after eight days lead list period okay generally in case of any dhcp service issues we can use the uh, release and renew commands Okay, that commands you can see from here, IP config slash question mark, you will see these commands. See renew command and also release command. Okay, so hope you understand the concept of how we can validate DHCP client IP address. We validate it from client system as well as we validate it from DHCP server. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view like share subscribe to the grand cloud garage channel if you are already subscribed i appreciate all your support bye for now thank you